Our topic for today is resolved. The UN is no longer important. So this topic would be okay for a parley motion or a world schools debate round. Somewhere where the spirit of the topic matters more than the exact wording of the topic when determining what the meaning of the round should be about, or is only debated one time instead of five, or maybe even ten rounds, depending on elimination rounds in a row, and somewhere where there's really no time pre-round to research cases, work evidence in them, and present the evidence to the judges in round. Unfortunately, that is not what we are dealing with today. In the public forum format, all the three things that make this topic better suited to another event all benefit the COD side in this one. The focus on the actual wording, the amount of preparation in advance, and the use of evidence in round, each of them take what would already be a fairly con-favored topic in any format and make it a nightmare for pro teams to affirm in this particular format. More so, pro teams have to be careful to win a tough argument without winning it too much, because if they win it too much, they go back to losing again. We're going to talk about that in a little more detail. We start with the wording, move on to the background, talk about the common arguments, and then from there move into some framework. So let's start with the wording. Good news, it is a short topic without many words to define. Bad news, these definitions are going to be a big part of multiple debates. Defining the UN isn't important in round, knowing all the things that comprise the UN is. The two things that are important to define are the term important and is no longer. Is no longer gets defined collectively, important can be defined on its own. A lot of mid-level rounds on this topic frankly, are probably going to just come down to what does important mean? Because in some ways, the UN is important. In other ways, it might be less important. And whose definition of important the judge believes determines who wins that round. So again, not every round, but rounds are advanced enough that teams are working with definitions to frame arguments into or out of the rounds but not so advanced that both teams are able to come to a compromise that allows reasonable clash for both sides in crossfire, those rounds are very often going to come down to that definition, and you need to be able to answer that to get into the higher level rounds. So we're going to start off with that. Important is a question of perspective. Important to who? Important compared to what? There can be different thresholds of importance for different things. You can say that for a multinational organization to be important, it does not need to be more important than all of its members combined, but it does need to be more important than any one of its members to be able to achieve its intended goal. There are many people who argue the UN is not important. They argue that it is unimportant by nature, they argue that it should not be considered to be effective, that it is corrupt, that it is slow, that any kind of multinational governmental organization is unimportant. The trouble is, Pro can't really use those. Pro has to prove that the UN no longer is important. And the phrase, is no longer, creates all kinds of problems here. In particular, if the pro side proves that the UN never was important, they have not proven the resolution. Therefore, pro has two conflicting burdens they need to address at the same time. They need to show that at some point in time, the UN was important, and that since then, Something has happened to make the UN not important anymore. If Pro does too good of a job of proving the United Nations unimportance, then Khan can agree with them and win the debate. So Pro needs reasons the UN has grown less important. They can't say never important, and they can't say less important but still important. It has to have once been important and now not be important. So your interpretation of what important means matters a lot. 
I do not think that you need to define exactly when the UN I do not think that you need to define a point exactly when the UN switched from important to unimportant. However, even without that, you should still have some idea of when that could be or why that could be. So let's get into some arguments and talk about where some of those places might be. Generally speaking, the first and easiest place to look is probably back at the Korean War. It is the first major conflict which the UN attempted to get involved in and took a side in. Up until then, the UN's role was to prevent conflicts like that. And this is a conflict that saw members of the Security Council on both sides of it. You could argue that the UN had some importance before the Korean War, but that after the Korean War, the UN has become much less important. The second point that you might want to look at is you can make the argument that the UN was important in a bipolar world. The UN served a valuable function during the Cold War when you had two superpowers staking out the bulk of the world into first world countries and second world countries, and that the UN was necessary to allow them to interact with out actually devolving into World War III, and the UN was important because it helped to protect the third world countries, the countries that were unaffiliated officially with either the first or second world. So that's one way that you could look at this. You could say that since the Berlin Wall fell, since the Cold War ended, the UN is no longer important. Its main role doesn't matter nearly as much. The General Assembly is too fragmented to actually do anything besides pass feel-good resolutions. And the Security Council, now that it's no longer divided between two poles, doesn't really serve a particular purpose that is important. Because in a multipolar world, with the rise of other countries, where you have a situation where China, India, Brazil, South Africa, other countries besides just the former USSR and NATO members are staking out their own separate interests and voting those interests in the UN. At that point, it is unsuited to deal with that the same way that it was suited to deal with a bipolar system back during the Cold War, and that that change has made the UN no longer important. Pro wants the debate to focus on how effective the UN is being right now and what the UN could be doing compared to what it is doing. The trouble is, Khan doesn't necessarily need to let Pro go there. Khan can choose to focus the debate instead more on these things are still being done. Could they be done better? Yes, but nobody else is doing them, and people want the UN to do them, and people are spending millions of dollars and lots of time lobbying and lots of political capital and lots of their own national resources to try to get the UN to do this. And you don't spend that much time, effort, etc. on something that you don't think is important. This also puts an awkward position for evidence indicts on the pro side. Because pro can correctly point out that most of the con authors who say that the UN is important have some kind of stake in that. They're from a country that really wants the UN to be important. They're from an organization that needs the UN to be important. They're related to the UN. The trouble is, if there are billions of people around the world who need for the UN to be important, that kind of makes the UN important. So attacking evidence for bias, unless it is directly from somebody who is paid by particular grants that come from UN funding, you're probably not going to have too much luck with that angle on the pro side. Okay, so common arguments that you're going to run into from the pro again, I think are going to be the UN is no longer important because it failed its first test to prevent a conflict. 
the UN hasn't been important since 1950. It was somewhat important for the first five years. There was a chance it wouldn't be a second League of Nations, but since then it has become unimportant. The second is the UN was important to prevent a Cold War from becoming a hot war, but now that the Cold War has ended, now that we're past Fukuyama's proverbial end of history, we are in a situation where in a multipolar world, an organization that gives this much veto power over the only effective branch it has, and has no way of actually being taken seriously in the other branches that it has, can't be considered important. And this is a place where you can bring in examples. For instance, there is almost nothing that can be done in the Security Council that is not going to upset one of the permanent members or one of its allies, especially when the current crop of permanent members isn't reflecting actual modern geopolitics, but is reflecting who won the Second World War. Then we have groups like the General Assembly, which have lots of different subcommittees they create and lots of different missions for those committees, but by nature of being a pluralistic organization that tries to include everybody, they have to, by nature, make these committees ineffective. We have Saudi Arabia this past month being added to the Committee on Women's Rights. It's probably the country with the single worst record of women's rights in the world, but it is their turn, and the UN does not want to be seen as not giving Saudi Arabia an equally valid voice on women's rights as any other country. So you can make uh, this attempt at pluralism in a multipolar world means that the Security Council is too outdated and too constrained, and the General Assembly is far too open in a lot of different ways that mean that it can't actually make progress. That because there's so much pluralism involved in its decision making, it doesn't actually make decisions. Its own members treat its other members with contempt. The countries in it feel free to ignore its resolutions, and it doesn't have any credible power to actually make a difference as far as what it is supposed to be doing. Now, obviously, there are other places that the UN does affect the world. The most common, you can talk about UN peacekeepers. This is a situation where the Khan side is going to argue that UN peacekeepers are making an important difference around the world in places that other forces would not be able to do anything, that they are helping to prevent genocide, and that that is in and of itself important. There are a lot of other con arguments that can be brought up. There are many other ways the UN is important. I don't want to spend too much time on each of them because con is not short on these. I just wanted to name some of the big few. Let's move on to framing the debate as a whole. So, if con can make pro have a debate about how important the UN is, con wins. If con can make pro have a debate about whether the UN was ever important, con wins. What pro needs to do to hold the line on framework is to make the debate as much about the spirit of the resolution rather than the literal wording. It is to make it about we show reasons the UN is unimportant, they show reasons the UN is important, and the team that does the better debating wins. Not the team that got the easier side of the topic, the team that does the better debating. All we need to do is give more persuasive reasons. And I said that Khan had a lot of arguments, but I didn't get into them for a reason. I think a smart pro team on this topic is going to sit back and say, we don't need to prove there is nothing about the UN that is important. We need to prove that the reasons the Khan team gave in four minutes that they think it was important are not reasons to consider the UN important. And if we can beat those reasons, we win the debate. This means that very often you're going to, go to prioritize offensive arguments, you're going to, go to prioritize turns when you are speaking on the pro side on this topic. 
If you are on the con side, you want to stay on message, you are more comfortable introducing new arguments later in the round than the pro side is, you want the round to get bigger, you want the round to get wider. If you can show a reason the US, UN is important and they can show you a dozen reasons that it is not, it is still important and you still win. So overall, pro wants to try and narrow the round down, con wants to try and broaden the round. Pro wants to define is no longer as more a question of, in general, do we prove the spirit of the resolution that it is not currently important? Khan wants to define it literally. Khan wants to say, they need to show that it was, and here is why it is not anymore. Pro doesn't want to commit themselves to a particular point at which the UN stopped being important, because if they lose that, they lose the round but they do want to have an idea of what some of those points could be, and a viable pro case could use some of those points of inflection as contentions if they were so inclined. Overall, it is a messy topic. It is not a typical public forum topic. It is not a topic that gets more debatable the more evidence both sides can bring in, but it is a topic where pro teams who play smart frame the debate effectively and make the round about who did the better debating, we'll still have a fighting chance at the end of it, and hopefully this will help you all maximize that. If you need help on a particular con argument, feel free to ask and we can talk through that. But overall, I think that anybody who's debated another topic and is smart and understands how to research will be just fine on con finding reasons why the UN is important. Let me know if you have questions. I can do a follow-up if necessary, and I hope this helps.